Hello, and thank you for joining me on Living Out of Suitcases. I'm Sean Rice from the International Tour of the Adams Family. The tour has been moving on quite nicely, and as the end comes near, we're remembering to savor all the good moments. We had some especially nice moments in our golden day in Palm Springs, California. Palm Springs is a desert resort city in Riverside County, California, and covers approximately 94 square miles, making it the largest city in the county by land area. Biking, golfing, hiking, horseback riding, swimming, and tennis in the nearby desert and mountain areas are major forms of recreations here in Palm Springs. As well as sampling the huge range of cuisines that the local restaurants provide and shopping along the main downtown strip. Start your day off with a unique breakfast at the King's Highway, a restored old Denny's that now has a fun desert diner feel and serves fresh food for hot days. Try something different like their green eggs and ham. After hitting the shops in downtown, I suggest stopping at Great Shakes, a fun little shake shack that lives up to its name. They have an ever-changing list of flavors, and they're all made fresh from local ingredients and served with a homemade mini donut. Try their date shake or the refreshing blueberry lavender. Also in downtown for a limited time, you can catch a glimpse of the 26-foot-tall Marilyn Monroe sculpture, Forever Marilyn, at the corner of Maine and Maine. You, too, can take a picture with Marilyn in her iconic pose from the seven-year itch. Another fun attraction to visit in the area is the San Gorgonio Wind Farm. Witness the greener side of Palm Springs as 2,700 wind turbines collect natural energy, enough to power about 300,000 homes in the area. Finally, when it's time to settle down for dinner, take in the awesome chef's tasting menu at the Iron Chef Garcia's Tinto, an intimate tapas bar and restaurant showcasing flavors from the mountainous coastal region that blurs the lines between Spain and France. Definitely worth every penny. Okay, on my very first tour, I actually came home in the red. I quickly learned what not to do after that. It's actually a common thing that happens. You're living in a hotel, you're in a new city every day, you're growing out to eat all the time, it feels like you're on vacation. But you're not on vacation. Seriously, you're not. So don't have vacation brain when it comes to your spending. Sit down and figure out how much you want to have in your bank at the end of the tour. Then figure out how much you have to put away every week from your paycheck. That's right, budget. Banks have wonderful automatic settings on their apps and their websites that will help you out now too. I figured out my magic number and now my bank when my check deposits takes out my savings and puts it right into my savings account. That way I have money to live off of when the tour ends. The key is to find balance. I'm not saying that if you're in Alaska you should pass up that chance to go dog sledding because you don't think it'll fit into your budget. Now I'm also not saying live off of ramen noodles for every day. Go out, have fun, find a nice balance between spending and staying in your budget. If you go over this week, make sure you spend under next week to account for it. Pretend, ah, that you're living at home and going to work every day, which is basically what you're doing just on the road. So make sure your mindset on your spending and budgeting is the same. Hopefully by following this tip you'll find your savings account overstocked by the time that your traveling ends. <laughs> Last week on Gaming Out of Suitcases, I looked at the dice game Elder Sign by Fantasy Flight Games. So this week, I'd like to look at uh, its kind of sister game, Elder Sign Omens. It's also one of my favorite pastimes on the bus. That's right, Fantasy Flight Games put out an app version of Elder Sign, which you can download onto your laptop, your smartphone, or your tablet. They capture the feel of the game really well, and they add in new things like sound effects and music to heighten your experience. In this app version of the game, you will control four investigators who are exploring Miskatonic University's museum in the hopes to find elder signs that they can use to seal away the Ancient One who is trying to break into our world and destroy it. Just like on the tabletop game, your investigators will move to different adventures and use their items and special abilities to use dice, which they will roll to hopefully complete the adventures and gain elder signs. There's a time clock that moves ahead three hours after every person's turn, and when it becomes midnight, then the game gets a chance to play. The game will resolve a Mythos card, which might add Doom Tokens to the Ancient One's Doom Track, or give you some horrible challenge to overcome until the next midnight happens. There's only two major differences between this game and the tabletop game. Firstly, spells. Now, in the tabletop game, a spell will hold a die for you until you need it, whether it be this adventure or another adventure. In this version of the game, the spells will only hold those die until the end of your current adventure. Also, when someone decides to assist you when they're on the same adventure as you, they do not have to risk 
risk losing a sanity or a stamina if you fail the adventure. They've also put out some really cool expansions that add other ancient ones and let you travel outside the museum on different expeditions, sometimes to the deep seas and sometimes to the Antarctic. Very cool. On your next travel day, I suggest testing out your mythos knowledge against the ancient ones and picking up a copy of Elder Sign Omens. Hi, my name is Pugsley Adams, and I'd love if you join me backstage at the Adams Family. This is Betsy, our merchandise manager. So, Betsy, what do you do? I sell the merchandise, Pugsley. I sell the souvenirs for the show. That's great. What is the best part about your job? The best part about my job is talking to people like you on a daily basis. Oh, and traveling the country, too, that too. What is the best uh, item that you sell? What's your favorite? Oh, hmm, my favorite, the shot glass set. The shot glass set? Yes. It's eight shot glasses, one for each member of the family. So I'm in it? Yes. Are you a family member? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yes. Oh, one for each like member of the family, and the one on the end says to find the one. That's mm -hmm. funny. Well, thank you, Betsy. You're welcome, Pugsley. This is Rob, our assistant electrician here at the Adams Family. So Rob, what do you do? Um, I start my days off by unloading trucks. First uh, and last impression of all the crews. Set up all the gear, make sure it's all working, get it in the air. Make up show call, I run uh, the spotlight for the show. That's cool. What advice would you give to all the kids at home wanting to run a spotlight? Um, practice, finesse, you know, get any as much time you want. And even if there's no show, just go around and spot random things in the theater. And, uh, practice makes perfect. And what is the hardest um, musical number in the show to spotlight? The hardest musical mm -hmm. number would be the Into One Normal Night, Into uh, Fester's Pickup, where he raises the scenery. Like, uh, for example, it's fading out in a two count, changing to frames one and six, and auto following to Fester, a chest shot to 50%. Fade and auto follow, go. So it's just a, it's a mouthful. No clue what that means. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks. This is Michael Klepper, the head of props here at the Adams Family. So Michael, what do you do? I make sure that everything you guys play with on stage is where it's supposed to be and not broken. That's great. What got you into props? It's where good carpenters go to die. Mm. And what's your favorite prop on the show? Sticking you in the torture rack. It is fun. I enjoy it. Well, thanks, Michael. Okay, bye. This is Weber, our flyman here at the Adams Family. So Weber, what do you do? I'm the flyman. I'm flying things in and out. What's your favorite part about your job? Watching you, almost crushing you. It's a good time, you know? Mm. It's good to know I hold my, your life in my hands, you know, at any given moment. And what's your favorite backdrop in the show? I'm going to have to say the stage left shutter. No clue what that is. Well, thanks, Weber. Well, gee, thanks. I, I can show you what the stage left shutter is tonight, you know, that thing that I can drop on your head at any given moment in time. Yeah, we can do that. Wait right here. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Living Out of Suitcases, and if you have, don't forget to like, comment, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this. And as always, if you know of any cool places that we should check out in the cities that we're about to go to, please let me know down in the comments. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to come back on Wednesday to check out Adam's Family Portraits, and Sunday for the next episode of Gaming Out of Suitcases. See ya!